a near endless line of semi trucks filled to the brim with a bounty of gold kernels. This is the entrance to Verisun Energy's ethanol production plant in Charles City, Iowa, opened in 2007. By the end of the decade, more than 200 ethanol biorefineries will dot the landscape from Washington State to Georgia. Ethanol is a biofuel that reduces tailpipe carbon monoxide emissions by up to 30%. Ethanol is about ready to take over as the number one user of corn in the United States. Converting corn to ethanol isn't that complicated. But to mass produce hundreds of thousands of gallons per day requires a detailed, coordinated, and streamlined system. Where we're at now is the starting point where everything begins. The corn comes in through here. A truck will weigh about 80,000 when it's full is about 30,000 for the truck and about 50,000 pounds of corn. If you're doing the math, that adds up to 45 million pounds of corn a week. Speed through here is very important. Typically, when the time a truck pulls onto the scale, we sample it, weigh it, and the truck pulls off, is less than a minute. Once the corn is okayed, the truck rolls over to the offloading area where it dumps its precious cargo into a pit. From the pit, the corn travels up a grain leg, where it flows into the top of the silos. We have four silos together. They hold about 2.2 million bushels of corn. We have a small fifth silo here, uh, where we actually uh, screen the corn, get any impurities out, and we actually grind the corn into a corn flour. Behind me is our hammer mills. That's where we grind our corn. We have a dry mill process. Once the corn is ground into a flour, we send it over a conveyor where it enters our process. We grind about 120,000 bushels of corn a day. Conveyors move the corn flour into the cook area, where it's soaked with water and enzymes, which break down the corn starch into sugar. For hundreds of years, this basic process has also been used to ferment alcohol and make liquor, like corn whiskey. Now called mash, it cooks at 225 degrees Fahrenheit to kill any bacteria. The corn mash then cools and travels to an 800,000 gallon fermentation tank, one of seven where yeast is added. You can't make alcohol without yeast. The yeast eat the sugar, and one of their byproducts is the, the ethanol. After 48 hours of fermenting, it's termed beer, although you wouldn't want to drink it. After fermentation, one of the most important processes in ethanol production is actually purifying the ethanol. We do that behind me. We have three distillation columns. The first one is what we call a beer column. We actually separate the alcohol from the solids. The mash runs through a series of metal plates and under high heat emits a water and alcohol vapor that rises and moves through two additional distillation columns to purify the alcohol to 190 proof. The final step sends the vapor to a molecular sieve. There the water and alcohol vapors are separated as the water is captured and absorbed by millions of small clay pellets. What's left is 200 proof pure alcohol. Contrary to what you may think, ethanol isn't anything new. Ironically, it was ethanol that fueled Henry Ford's early Model T, the first flexible fuel vehicle. And Ford might be surprised that after 100 years, ethanol is in the alternative fuel category. Critics question, is ethanol really environmentally friendly? To grow the corn and convert it to ethanol requires nitrogen for fertilizer and diesel equipment on the farms, as well as natural gas at the processing plant. Some experts estimate that it takes one gallon of fossil fuel to produce 1.3 gallons of ethanol. Still, there are already nearly six million flexible fuel vehicles traveling America's roads. 
They're called flexible because these cars are able to use either unleaded gasoline or the current ethanol standard, E85. E85 releases 80% less carcinogens, such as benzene, into the air than unleaded gasoline. In 2006, ethanol use in the U.S. reduced CO2 equivalent greenhouse gas emissions by approximately 8 million tons. That's equal to removing the annual emissions of more than 1.2 million cars. But is there enough corn to feed us and fuel our cars? We're not going to run out of corn. We have plenty of corn to go around, and if we start running out of corn, the price will go up and farmers will plant more acres to corn. Detractors, however, point out that this will mean less acreage available for other crops. Nevertheless, the corn ethanol story has an extremely useful co-product. Dried distiller's grains are the portions of corn that can't be fermented, but they contain highly valued nutrients for livestock. This is where we actually process the distiller's grain and dry the distiller's grain out. The solids come out into a conveying system that takes it through two big rotary drum dryers where we remove all but 10% of the water. So we have a 90% dry solid product. If you can see this, this is a mixture of protein, fiber, and oil. This is what the animals want. This has always been viewed probably prior to this industry as a waste product, but now it's just a viable product that we use in the feed industry. It takes a mere 65 hours to both process a kernel of corn into ethanol and ready it for shipping by rail. And it only took about 100 days for the corn to grow. Much of that corn is hybridized, specifically to get the ethanol to fossil fuel ratio higher. But in the future, it may